Hello again to everyone. As you can see, we have once again one patient on the hoist. And this time it's the Toro and the newer version of that. And the problem is with the, with the auxiliary hydraulics and the steering function. So both of them are forceless and they don't work. So steering is really rough. Only thing that is happening is via the orbitrol itself. You can turn the rotate or change the steering angle, but you have to do all the work by with your muscles. And for lifting up the cutting unit, it doesn't have enough force. It has some. It's it's having some force, but not 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 clearly enough. So there's something problem with the with the hydraulics with this unit. Okay, we have done a lot of fault finding with my brother and there is the auxiliary hydraulic pump or it's acting as a charge pump for the hydrostatic unit also so it's first feeding the hydrostatic and then the flow is used by the orbitrol for steering and the also for auxiliary hydraulics lifting cylinders but you can see over here be, below here so we have been dismantling this unit or this pump already something like six times and i guess that the problem is not there but of course we created some problems by touching that pump so at least those few o-rings so one o-ring and, and Step as the L they are now replaced. You can see that the pump housing is gasketed with this O ring and the rotating axle has step as here. So the, both of these are now new and probably they are leak free. Those are excess ones. That wasn't so expensive to take those new ones. But like said, we have spent already two days playing with this, which is really nice. Then after we were fault find it the pump and pretty sure that that is not the problem. We disassembled this orbitrol unit from the from the steering axle. And I have to say that the guy who has been designing this mechanical part so this is kind of a stupid construction that you have to take really many parts away to get certain parts away yeah but maybe that's the way they are doing machines in the, in the us but anyway once the pressure was coming or the flow was coming to the this side of the machine with the pressure line. Then there are four other lines. Tank line directly to the tank or for the cooler. And then left left turning, right turning, and then the excess flow. That the excess flow is going for the auxiliary hydraulics. And we took tank line and excess flow line away and started the unit and both of those routes had a flow out outside so it started to smell out that maybe there is some pro internal fault with this with the pressure relief or, or the with the with the prior prior priority priority ventili priority valve yeah and the ef port i guess it's a sign for excess flow at least in Danfoss other priority valves, it's the meaning of that port marking. So the excess flow port should provide the pressure for, for the auxiliary hydraulics. And the way we somehow got that fault find it is that we got round piece of copper thin copper it's not this one I guess or it can be that it, it's this one 
Since these are O-ring seal fittings and I don't have any of them, we just block the tank line in, in for the for hose fitting here and carefully try to lift up the cutting unit and seems a la beam, then it seemed to be working but we didn't have any courage to to play more with that so it was just one second try out and diagnosed by that so fingers crossed now the status of this repair is that this happened something like almost two weeks ago, ten days ago, and we managed to find almost same type code of Orbitrol from eBay, from UK, and that was delivered a couple of days ago. And now the idea of today's subject is to is to switch this one to the new one, it's used part. But we have some twists in the plot, at least the fittings here. Murat is fitting. I, can, I cannot see anything. The pressure and tank line, they are one size bigger o-ring face seals in, in this unit and in, in the spare part they are smaller ones, so I have to do something for that. About this, about this fault finding what we have done. So here, here we have the transmission side and that small one is the charge pump for the, for the hydrostatic, closed loop hydrostatic unit and then that same flow is taken out from that transmission to the, first to the orbitrol and then the excess flow is guided for the, to the, towards the lifting valve. So both of these uh, have been out of the out of the power. So there are a couple of possibilities. What is happening, or what's the wrong? You don't get any flow out of the pump, or you are losing the flow somewhere in the system. So. We tried to check out first that the flow is coming from the pump and we even took this relief valve away and dismantled it and checked that there are no dust or debris in there. So the flow was coming out from here and the next thing what we have been able to do with our, with our gadgets is that we blocked this tank line connection from from here from this orbitral and by doing that we kind of were nasty ones and or naughty ones and forced the oil to go to the lifting valve and it kind of worked during that couple of seconds. So now the best hope is that we are having the fault in, in this orbitral valve. Fingers crossed. Okay. My brother found out from eBay that almost same type code that there is in the machine, this OSPM 80 CCM. PB means power beyond, I guess. So, same size of the unit, but some differences in the, in the type code. So, that's always a bonus. So at least the fixing for this unit, mechanical fixing, is there is this kind of additional frame that is it's not in, in, in that unit 
it's fixed directly from the this face in in, in the toro and then this this unit is from Hater MT313 mover cut or slash kubota. So how their hater and the maybe the most interesting difference at this moment is also that the couple of these feedings in this unit in in Toro they are one size bigger and these these fittings are I guess they are not fittings they are some kind of stud bolts inside the orbitor troll you can see it from the picture so we have to remove a couple of those and take take the fittings from that old one I'm guessing so and then we have to have our fring fingers crossed that otherwise this type could code would be the same and there wouldn't be any pressure relief valve settings or something like that that would be preventing the functionality of the machine do you guess that what was the best part of the this bear part or used part of course it was the price the price price for this used one was 120 British pounds so it was roughly 250 euros and some other prices from the eBay what were exactly the same code or it, and it was not eBay it was some official places it was over thousand euros so for a new unit so 250 versus thousand that's the name of our game my stomach is already grinding like a crazy because this is some kind of gambling now I'm guessing we need to face our death and start to try this or start to try how, how this will go. Easily away, yo. Fairly easily, yes. That's the excess flow, and this is the pressure. Down. 
Last prey. Okay, now the only thing is to stuff it back there. This is kind of a nightmare, this, this mechanical setup. This version of Orbitorol has these kind of fixing ears, like mentioned. And in this application they are not used, so we will see if there is a enough space here for them to move or do we need to cut them away. I'm not changing that part, I don't dare to dismantle that unit.
how this base machine operates now. The force definitely is back with the steering and the, with the auxiliary hydraulic so I would say that the service or repair was success so really happy for that. And the lawn has been growing now something like two weeks so it's quite quite, quite long at the moment so should have been cut already one week ago so but I guess I'm gonna go and proceed with the moving of the lawn and this video was here so thanks for watching and let's do something else next time thanks and bye